chapter four, module four. This is on using CSS to format elements in a web page, starting on page 121 in the text. In general, you have three different ways to provide styles for your elements. The most common is using an external style sheet, and that uh, requires the use of the, the link uh, tag, rel would be set to style sheet, and, and then the href just points to the location of the style sheet. You can embed styles into the page directly, and that's done with the style tags, and then the contents of the style sheet go between them. And finally, you have an inline style. This is uh, an attribute of an element. So here we have an H1 tag, and we have a style attribute directly in line with this element where we're setting some rules here. So all these are valid, but in general, you want to keep them up here. Second here, and for your one-off situations, then these are fine. And at the very end of this module, I'll show you sort of how all this works in, in Apex Now 4.2 because some things have changed. In general, this is the way the browser is going to apply them. Uh, it's going to go uh, external style sheets first, and that's it's true. Really, everything in a browser works uh, by order of operations or you know, um, you know top down basically. So usually your styles from an external style sheet, they're the the link elements that bring them in, they're placed in the head section. So it'll bring those in first, and your embedded styles are usually after those. And finally, inline styles are brought in with the element as the browser is parsing it. Here we see an example of what a head section would look like, uh, the standard title attribute, and followed that by uh, two different style sheets. The uh, link attribute brings them in, and the href just points to them. So it'll bring you know, the browser is going to start parsing, and it's eventually going to get to this link, and it's going to say, ah, I need to bring this in. Here's its location. I'm going to fire off another HTTP request and bring it, the contents in for that. I'm going to parse it. I'm going to apply it. And then we move on to this one and uh, send off another HTTP request. Hopefully they've been cached. And, and you know, when you're using a file system, like you see here, uh, it's very likely that they will be cached. And that's a good thing. Uh, the request stops right at the at the browser. It doesn't have to go out across the network. So that's what we're looking for. Here you see uh, something we'll talk more about when we get to Chapter 11. But uh, with these links, you can. There's another attribute for media, which allows us to say uh, how that style sheet should be applied or when. And the default is screen to, to what people are looking at on the screen, uh, but it is possible to switch it to print, um, which then says apply these rules uh, when printing the document, when printing the web page. And again, we'll talk more about that later this week. Yesterday, we talked about HTML5 and how HTML5 introduces a lot of new tags or elements, and, and the idea is all about more semantic markup, making more sense of the content in our web pages. Uh, but the older browsers that don't know about HTML5 would have a problem if you just started using it. So uh, the folks at Google created what they call a, a shiv, a shim. Uh, it goes by several different uh, names. But this is a JavaScript file that folks started adding to their web pages and what it would do, you know, in, in short, is sort of what you see here. Uh, this is the manual version of that, and it accesses the document object. Can anyone tell me what the global object is in JavaScript in your browser? Anybody remember that from yesterday? It might have been a bit too soon. Got an answer, the window. That's perfect. So... Really, it's, this is just like saying window.document, and document is how we access the DOM in, in our browsers. And there's a method uh, as, as part of the document object called create element. And this basically allows us to create elements that don't exist already in, in, our, in our browsers. Uh, so this would create some of these HTML5 
elements. Uh, of course, if you were to do this, you would also need to tell the browser uh, how to style them because remember that browsers have default styles for elements and, and that's both good and bad at the same time. Uh, that's why folks often do a CSS reset um, and uh, you know that's basically what you're, you're doing here. You're supplying those defaults because obviously they wouldn't exist. Now here's a neat little fact thinking about HTML5 boilerplate. HTML5 boilerplate includes a reference to um, Modernizer, which is another sort of web library. I, I like to think of Modernizer doing for CSS what uh, J uh, jQuery did for JavaScript. So Modernizer actually does all this for us. You no longer need the Google shiv. You no longer need to specify these styles. All you have to do is put Modernizer in your app. And of course, if you start with boilerplate, then, then you're doing that. And uh, the Apex team also uses Modernizer. So that's taken care of for us. Here we see some common units of measure, uh, both uh, fixed and uh, relative. Um, pixels and, and points are absolute values. and uh, Fairly common to use them. Um, percentages are, are also fairly common. I guess it just depends on what you're trying to do, but you have to be uh, choosy. It's, it's unfortunately not a simple subject, and it takes a little bit of experimentation. Of course, it always varies on exactly what it is you're trying to do in any given situation. Um, but pixels, or these these absolute values, are obviously based on on the scale of the monitor and uh, let's say you have something 10 pixels in height and the user increases the resolution of their monitor. Well, uh, your 10 pixels just became smaller, right? Whereas uh, percentages uh, take up a certain portion of the screen and, and would not have necessarily become smaller. But it, it got a lot more complicated of late uh, when, when we get into mobile and how mobile changes things. And, and now we have these higher resolution monitors. Uh, so a uh, pixel is no longer a pixel. You have pixels that are a fraction of the size of pixels uh, just a few years ago. So it's all quite complex, unfortunately. So here we see some basic HTML for a web page. We have a body, we have a header, and a section. The section has some basic content in it. Here we see some CSS that styles it up using relative units of measure. When you see body font size 87.5%, what's really happening here is we're saying 87.5% of the default that the browser would use. Now most browsers, I believe they start with a 16 uh, pixel uh, default, so it's a little bit smaller than that. But keep that in mind, not all of them do. So uh, going back to the concept of a CSS reset, uh, th there's a, a guy named Eric Meyer in, in the CSS world who's kind of like the Tom Kite or the Stephen Feuerstein of, of, of our Oracle world. And uh, he's been working on perfecting the, the reset um, for quite some time. And uh, it's been updated again recently because of HTML5. And of course, that's also bundled in with Modernizer, a good CSS reset. 